foodie is just someone who loves food. I think, in my opinion, it just has nothing to do with being a food snob or only enjoying caviar and champagne. I think a foodie is just somebody who enjoys food. I just go by Pim. Madonna doesn't need a second name. I write a food blog called Shape Him, and I just finished a book called The Foodie Handbook. The Foodie Handbook is about my love affair with food. I really believe that great food just start with the best ingredients you can possibly find. Today we're going to be cooking a couple of recipes from the book, and we're going to go around to some of my favorite places to find ingredients. We're in a little town called Saratoga, that George Novakovich's orchard. This is the area where we used to have tons of fruit orchards, and this was really the fruit basket of this area. We're going to try to get some nectarines, and we're going to make a really nice summery fruit tart with it. I'm a foodie optimist. I believe in the innate good taste in everyone. If you give someone this rock-hard peach that was picked unripe from the supermarket and compare that to this perfect peach that you can get from the farmer's market. Anybody can taste the difference. Let me introduce you to George, who's responsible for these wonderful fruits. Can you tell us how to pick a good nectarine? Yes. And I remember you said the uglier one, the better. Yes. <laughs> Why yes. is that? I don't know. It's just something about them. I discovered that the little spots on them, it's kind of like little sugar spots, and they tend to be the sweetest ones of the bunch. Oh. And these nectarines are really good right now. Oh, oh it smells wonderful. Thank you. And now we're going to make another quick stop at Love Apple Farm to pick up some salad ingredients for tonight. The farm is named after the old French name of tomatoes, pomme d'amour. Everything grown in this farm, every single piece of beautiful, delicious lettuce is a biodynamically farmed. It's just something beyond organic. And it works really well. It's kind of a little voodoo-ish, but you know what? The stuff tastes fantastic. So we're about done here, and we're going to head down to Santa Cruz and make a stop at my favorite wine bar and pick up something cold, icy cold. It's hot like Hades here right now. The Suave is one of those little wine bars that I wish everyone would have in their neighborhood. We're here with my friend John Locke, not the 17th century philosopher, nor the guy from Lost, but nonetheless, Mr. John Locke. Hopefully we will be found by the end of this <laughs> segment. John is the wine director here and also the shopkeeper extraordinaire. So for the tart, it's nectarine with a little French pan, just the almond cream. Mm -hmm. You've had that. I have had that. That's yes. delicious. A wine that's great is uh, Chenin Blanc. This is from a small appellation called Mont Louis. It's not too oaky, not too strong, won't overpower the tart, and also from a biodynamic producer, which we like very much. Sort of very easy on uh, easy on planet Earth. So I think I'm gonna go with the Mont Louis. Perfect. Excellent choice. Now we're gonna go and get cooking. that I live in an area where I'm surrounded by beautiful farms, I have access to these amazing ingredients, but you could do it too. Just go to your farmer's market or even just go to your store and talk to the farmers, talk to the guy at the produce department, and they can point you to what's in season right now and what's the tastiest ingredient. The recipes I made today are all in the book. Now that was a perfect tart crust. And I really do hope that you try them and put your own spin to it and come back and let us know what you've done. Mm -hmm.